You're very welcome to the Irish Political Roundup with me, Roisin de Cleric. And me, Paul Brophy. On our debut edition of the Irish Political Roundup, we'll be paying tribute to former Carlo Kilkenny uh, TD, Bobby Eilert, who sadly passed away uh, back in July. We'll be joined by some of his former colleagues to discuss uh, Bobby's career and share their memories of, of Bobby. We're delighted to be joined by current Fine Gael TD for Carlo Kilkenny, John Paul, Deputy John Paul Phelan, apologies, uh, who served with Bobby on Kilkenny County Council. And in fact, when John Paul got elected to Kilkenny County Council in 1999, he was the youngest person to do so at 21 years of age. We're also delighted to be joined by current Sinn Féin TD for Carlo Kilkenny, Kathleen Function, who is also the party spokesperson on children and is also the chairman of the Joint Directors Committee on, on children as well. So. Uh, thanks for, for being here, Kathleen. And we're also delighted to be joined by one of John's Fianna Fáil, sorry, one of Bobby's uh, Fianna Fáil colleagues, Councillor John Coonan, who would have worked very closely with, with Bobby. And John is a, a councillor for the Kilkenny City area. And last but, but at least, uh, we're joined by former Labour Party Mayor and Cahirlach of Kilkenny. Mary Fitzpatrick. We're all delighted to have to have you here. So firstly we'll just um put it put it out there to the to the group and Roisin, of course, it's great to have you here as well. What are some of your memories of um uh of Bobby Earl? I know Roisin, you were uh, delighted to have Bobby as a kind of a subject for your your dissertation. I do, and I'm delighted to say that John Paul Feeling and uh, Kathleen Function took part in this um, this dissertation, and that was the one and only time I met Bobby. But while he made a massive, massive impression, and he uh, he even charged my phone that day up there in Leinster House, and I got the nicest cup of tea with his assistant, maybe the the most delicious cup of tea. So, yeah, I met Bobby, and. I got biscuits as well, Paul. All right. <laughs> I think I was too nervous at the time to eat. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, and that is the reason why I'm here today and we're probably doing the Zoom was the dissertation, but Bobby to me was just an absolute gentleman, just like John Paul was and Kathleen was a perfect lady. And But it was really just what a, a down to earth, really good decent human being he was and you know I, I wish I had a met him more but just an absolute gentleman and a really sincere man as well. Yeah absolutely and John Paul you got elected to Kilkenny County Council in the same electoral area in 99 with uh, Bobby Aylward you know you were working in in the same electoral area how was he to, to you kind of starting off I know you were in totally different parties but um, how was he in your your early days? He was, he was um, exactly what Roisin said, like he couldn't be more helpful and more warm. It was Bobby's first election as well in 1999. Um, he had been co-opted when Liam um, was uh, made a Minister of State. Um, and like he sailed away at the top of the pole. Um, but were, like uh, he couldn't have been more helpful uh, as somebody who, from my background who had no family involvement in politics. Um uh, he would have known my family very well through the GAA, through hurling. Um, but uh, like he, he couldn't have he couldn't have been more helpful to me. It's hard to believe. Like that's that's twenty over twenty three years ago now. Uh, but yeah, all through all through his the, the time that I served with him in Leinster House as well as in Kilkenny County Council. Um, I think we had one argument once, um, which was okay. more of a misunderstanding than an argument. But um, he was kindness personified and and actually just a very straightforward person. Like, you know, what you saw was what you got. Um, yeah. And the, like he was unusually straightforward uh, for a politician, because uh, often all of us, and I include myself, you know, we're, we're thinking of other things or we're watching our, our, our ourselves. Um, he was always he was always looking out for others. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Kathleen, you would have um, contested um, elections in 2007 where Bobby would have been elected first. Um, Bobby, he lost the seat in 2011, um, but he um, got it back in the by-election in, in um, 20, 2015, which he won, which was very important for yourself because it, it laid the foundations um, for your winning your seat in, 
in 2016. But um, what are your memories of kind of, you know, being, being with Bobby on kind of like on the campaign trail and, you know, the base that you, you see on um, your local radio and stuff like that? Um, well, first of all, can I just say, I think this is a great idea because I've already learned something there. I didn't realise his first election was, I knew John Paul was the youngest councillor and I think possibly holds that record. I don't think anyone ever younger has, has been elected <laughs> to the council. Um, but I didn't realise that they were elected at the same time. So it's amazing what you learn. To be honest, the by-election is my uh, probably standout memory of Bobby, just because in a by-election, it's quite intense in the sense that well, it's obviously usually only in one constituency or maybe sometimes two or three constituencies. By-elections, by -elections, they're, fun they're a funny animal in the sense of kind of like, it's a cross between a local election and a referendum on, on the government. Yeah. And the whole um, marriage equality referendum was on at the same time. So there was a, a lot of kind of moving place, you know. Yeah, there there was. And I um, that in 2014, the local elections were, would have been me. So I would have ran in that election. And then like the by-election, okay, it was a year later. And then when the general election came, like it wasn't even a year later. So there was so many elections that a lot of us were interacting a lot more. But um, I would have like obviously met Bobby a good bit during that campaign. Um, I always thought I, I would agree with what, what's been said about what John Paul was saying. He was just really down to earth. Um, he was one of the few, and I'm not just saying this because he's on the call, but I would put him into this category too, John Paul. I feel like we've actually contested loads of elections together because yeah. we ended up being in the European election randomly together as well. Yeah. So there's very few people, like I remember when I was first on the council and I was the only yeah. Sinn Féin, like you don't know the procedure necessarily. So you're really relying on someone that's going to be decent to you. And I, I think Bobby just totally was in that category. You could kind of say to him, like, oh, what time is such and such happening at? Or did you hear about this? Or, and he wouldn't lead you astray. Yeah. You know, he wouldn't kind of say, oh, it's starting at seven. It was actually starting at six. So, yeah. Uh, really. I, I, there, I are few, there are people out there that do black art as well, you know. So, I'm yeah. probably one of them. No, he just was very, like, um, he was 100% down to earth. He was 100% um, himself, I suppose, is the best way of putting it. Like, he just, you know, there was no sort of uh, airs or graces about him, and you could chat away to him. He was never personal either in, in political debate, um, you know, which is is always welcome, particularly when you're in the same constituency, and, and at most, for the most part, yeah. you have to, the kind of the similar interests and the same things at heart and we're kind of all campaigning to a certain extent for the same things locally. So I always yeah. thought Bobby was 100% decent and I know like he would have, we chatted a lot about, he would have chatted about his grandkids, let's say when I was talking yeah. about my kids, like we'd often be talking about the schedule in the doll and just the whole, you know, the way it can change at a drop of a hat and, you know, there, there, I, I think the best way of probably summing it up is I never felt there was any sort of an agenda with Bobby. You could just say to him, you know, if you said to him, God, I'm just having the worst day ever, like you just know that that wouldn't go back anywhere, you know, like that he wouldn't try and never use anything against you as such if you were just being being honest and being yourself. And it's, yeah, it's great uh, to work, work with from, someone even though, who politically yeah. might be poles apart, but you know, on a personal level, you can work with this person and there's, you know, yeah. straight up and, you know, they're, you know, Decent. Yeah. Well, that's 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 the the main kind of thing. Because John, you would have been kind of in the engine room there in at that, that by election work with Bobby he helped run his office. I'm sure you and the the Elwood family go back go back a lot a long way. I'm sure you have many many you know fond memories of, of the late Bobby Elwood. Indeed, uh, Paul, I, I have I suppose lifelong fond memories of, of Bobby. Really, my family goes back to senior love. Uh, Bobby's dad and Liam as well we go back a long long way but Bobby was unique uh, and as has been said already here on the programme Bobby was Bobby he never pretended to be anybody else I remember Bobby before he got into politics when he was involved with the Shamrocks and when he was involved in yeah. football before he got involved with the hurling team as well he gave it everything and he respected everybody and I think it is safe to say and I think Kathleen did say and it's, it's only fair to say that Bobby never said a bad word about anybody that's for sure he might differ in opinion Bobby had a you know, his family was very important from farming and politics and sport. But he treated everybody with respect in all of those codes, including his family, sport and all that. He never hid what he felt. And another thing about Bobby, I always felt as well, if Bobby wanted to say something about party politics, and particularly his own party, 
He said it where it needed to be said. He said it in the party rooms. He said it at Cora meetings or he said it in his office. Bobby knew where to say and what to say and how to say it. And I think he'd be a great example to the rest of us, including me in my life. I took uh, loads of examples from the other family and indeed uh, Bobby uh, in particular because I knew him so long. Dirty, dirty, dirty laundry, laundry in public, John. Not at all. Bobby was a big man with a big smile. I think all of the other politicians who have already spoken about him, uh, I suppose, aptly describe Bobby. He, he had a big smile for everybody, not just for me, but for everybody as well. And I remember clearly in his office up there in Patrick Street as well, uh, my grandchild, Ava, she's pretty handy with drawing and that. She did an itch in the Bobby. He put it up, up on the wall and when he got his office refurbished, he insisted that the painting would be back up on the wall beside his chair. He had a loaf of children, and that's mentioned already here, in his family, he really had. Yeah, he, he, he never did that either. But, uh, the, the thing that you, you, you'd have to say about Bobby, he was never self-serving. And I think John yeah. Paul had mentioned it earlier on, maybe Cassie. So politics has changed today, utterly changed with technology and the way yeah. people do things, I suppose, with television, radio, and easy access of different communication ways to people. But Bobby used the one communication of being who he was, serving the public. He served to the best of his ability. And it didn't, care who they, it didn't matter who they were or what age they were or where they came from. But that was Bobby's style. And he had, uh, I suppose, fervent, I suppose, ideas about various matters that might necessarily agree with the policy of being a Paul or indeed the government of the day as well. But he said it in a way and in a manner uh, which left you with no doubt that that was Bobby's genuine opinion. I remember referendums, different things, the marriage referendum, and yeah. various other ones as well. Bobby gave his point of view honestly as Bobby, and people knew that, and they respected him for being genuine about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And we're delighted to have Mary Fitzpatrick here um, <laughs> in picture, in, in living colour, as they say. Mary, <laughs> you would have soldiered with the Aylwards, you know. Uh, I would indeed, I would indeed, Paul. And, and, uh, I have to say now, uh, so, some years ago, I met his mother and his sisters. And uh, they were, she was a very, very proud woman, you know, be, uh, uh, because of her two sons. But in, in, I sat with Bobby on numerous committees and I suppose one of the well, I think the I think I I I am the we can fix that. Yeah. Can you unmute yourself, Mary? Mary? Yeah, there you go. Sorry. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear here. Well, you might have to repeat that point. Well, no, I'm saying what I like about about Bobby. Was yeah. He was very clear on his opinion. Yes. Yeah. We've lost your sound again, Mari. I think she's gone <laughs> altogether. She left the meeting, yeah. Yeah. We'll oh. come back oh, in she's again. She's still there. Oh. One thing, one thing, Paul, I'd say maybe in the meantime, yeah. as well, while we're waiting for Mari's, Bobby uh, was a loyal, unwavering supporter of Fianna Fáil. That's for sure. Like I did say, he expressed his views where they needed to be expressed. But he was never afraid to speak out openly in debate in those areas or in those forums to say what his views were. And, uh, you know, he was a firm believer in teamwork, really. And you could see that by the Fianna Fáil representative of South Kilkenny. He had a great way and ability to attract support and the support of the masses, both men and women, young and old, across. You'd see it when we have our meetings in Spring Hill. There was always a huge contingent from South Kilkenny. And even if there were people down the floor and they did stand up and offer a different opinion to Bobby, he wasn't a bit afraid uh, to say that. But it was very important that he, he appealed to all those good people because he was genuine about it. But he always, always welcomed the support of all age groups from all walks of life into the party. He genuinely did. And they were attracted with Bobby's style because Bobby didn't put on a show. Bobby was Bobby. And what he said, they knew he meant it. Well, that's, that's I, very important. I have a, yeah. a, 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 a story or a bit of a story oh, along, those, along, those, along those lines as well, Paul. Um, yeah. And Roisin, it's, it's about, well, I, I, about more than 10 years ago, I, I was in the Senate uh, at the time. Bobby had won the general election in 2007 and, and Fianna Fáil were in government. And um, it was a family in my own area who would be, you know, have a longer history than my own in Fine Gael and a particular issue arose and uh, we needed to get someone in government to listen um, and contact was made with Bobby on a Friday night and okay. he, arra he arranged a meeting with 
very senior government minister at the time and the issue was resolved. And I suppose the most impressive thing about it was Bobby Edward knew that he was never going to get a vote out of it. But um, it was just, it was a particular difficulty that arose that had to be resolved and he just dropped everything and solved it. Um, He knew it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, And it kind of epitomised him to me because often, like, we we all get little bits and pieces from time to time that we might need advice or from from, uh, either fellow members of our own party or people in other parties. But this was, um, this was, it was above and beyond that. Um, And the situation was resolved and and a potential disaster for a family was averted purely because um, he knew it was the right thing to do. And it kind of epitomised you know, you'd be thinking back over different different stories and different events, but it epitomized to me what Bobby Edward was all about, really, which was yeah. trying to help trying to help people, regardless of of whether it was of any benefit to him or not. Um, exactly. I, uh, I've spoken to a few people who would be health and disability campaigners mm. and it was a subject that he took a, uh, a great in- interest in and he was um, you know, extremely helpful to to a lot of a lot of them groups because you know, when you're in your local uh, TD, you get representations from various different, different, different uh, bodies and, and individuals, yeah. and you know. So, I suppose it's important to kind of you know listen to all, all those opinion, opinions and views. I suppose you you share you share that, Kathleen. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, well, Mary's back. Mary's Sorry. back. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> Hi, Mary. We can hear you loud. We can hear you loud and clear, Mary. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes, yeah, yeah. you were kind of rambling there. We could we couldn't hear you, but we can hear you loud and clear now. So oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I was just saying how respectful that Bobby yeah. was to people, you know, and um, um, um he was very very proud of of uh, his family, and uh, mm-hmm. his love for his wife and children and grandchildren. Uh, uh, and when we'd be at conferences and we'd be sitting quietly having a cup of tea, or that you know he'd be talking about them, and he was very proud of them, but. It was the history of the Elward family, I suppose, that I was very, very interested in. And that was that he had told me at one stage that his father was a, a senator. That's and right, I suppose yeah. that, that was the beginning of the, the, the political life uh, for them, if, if they were used to uh, debating going on within the household. And Charlene was there for 30 years. And uh, he... Oh, yeah. local, and he general European always got elected. And another very respectful uh, member of the family, and Bobby himself. But I, I often thought there since he died, you know, that must have had wonderful parents for to bring them up with that mindset of respecting people for who they are, not for what they have, but for who they are. And I would have seen that when he was on the canvas trail. Now, he was in around Uncle Kenny there at one stage canvassing some years ago. And everybody knew him in the local housing estates. Uh, Everyone was able to identify him. He was able to identify with them. Mm. And I mean, that's that's a very special gift uh, for to have uh, in a person. And when he was in the chamber, he respected each and every member that was sitting there. Yeah. And Actually, as you know, we, we all come from different parties and different representations. Hmm. But it didn't matter once we were in there. We were the one group and decisions had to be made. And okay. uh, the last thing I'm going to say is that I have kept many, many acquaintances. And I would consider some of them my friends since ah. I was a member of the local authority. And uh, sure... His nephew Eamon now, isn't he still sitting in there yep. and carrying on the of politics in, in the Elwood family? Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I remember <laughs> your <laughs> former <laughs> colleague, Maurice Shartle, who's a mm. former Labour Party councillor in Homer, a fine public representative too. I remember him yeah. telling me one story, him and Bobby during the chamber one day and had a big blaring round of roaring <laughs> and shouting and stuff like that. And then we were back in... Langton's afterwards and there was a pint of Smittix on the counter and Bobby said forget that row I said ah, Boris like ah no 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 I don't want to no, forget it then so that mm-hmm. kind of gives you a good um, yeah. idea of the, that's, of, that's of the way he was and I, I, I remember being down around uh, Muller about coming back from an appointment one day and uh, I went into that pub there for lunch and uh, he was up at the bar and, right. and uh, sorry 
Rising Sun. Yeah, the Rising Sun. The rising yep. Sun. And uh, yeah, I just chatted brother. to him briefly and I went down, had the lunch and all that. And I got up to pay and they told me that's paid for. Uh, you know, and uh, I I didn't see him for about a month after that and I thanked him for it. And he said, oh, no problem at all. You can catch me another day. That's the way he was. You know, he is, I think myself, he is very, very badly, sadly and badly missed down around the Ballahale area because the Ballahale Shamrocks were his life. Yeah. Uh, he loved them hurling down there and was, was very proud of them as well. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, I think I think he will be missed. He is missed and he will be missed, you know. So he, he, he left a, a, a lifetime legacy behind him. He was one, one in a thousand, really. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. You won't, uh, you won't see the, the likes of them. I suppose, John, you're a uh, Fianna Fáil mm-hmm. councillor here in Kilkenny. On the local organisation wise, you know, I'm sure he's very, very much missed. Because it, it, it's incredible mm-hmm. to think that only two years ago he was a t- sitting TD and he was contesting a general election. And um, sadly, mm-hmm. he's no longer with us. So it just, it just goes to show how. How things can change so rapidly. How fragile, how fragile a human being is, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned, Mary did mention, and you're right, Mary, she mentioned the, uh, the contribution of, of the elders, which they don't boast with. You hear some fans in the Britannia they found the earth. The, the elders didn't mention that here about found, finding the earth. But you mentioned about Bobby. Uh, Bobby, God be good, from his dead, was 15th of July, he passed away. Yeah, and just, uh, I think it was exactly 48 years uh, to the day previous that his dad, Bob Edward, died at the age of 63 as well. His daddy died at 63. Mm. He did contest three general elections and barely missed out the third time. And he was in the Senate for one year when he passed away. And then Liam took over. That, that, that's what happened there. Uh, but I think, you know, they, they left a, a huge legacy, a genuine legacy. And that you spoke with the Shamrocks and Ballahale. I remember Bobby one day at a match. And I was with a yeah. man that I knew from Castle Gore, Mick Fitzgerald, playing against the rail yard. The match was kind of tough, to say the least. <laughs> and Bobby and Nick Carlton, like one thing and the other man, got into a little bit of a little bit of fifty cups. Now it was kind of serious. It was so serious I said the referee was a little bit afraid. But he took the two lads' names anyway, to make a long story short. When the game was over, Bobby went over straight away and the two lads embraced to shook hands. The man turned on him. Jesus is John Coon, he said, That's sport yet. That's real sport. And that's the way he did politics as well. On the day when the job had to be done. He left it in the the council chambers was Absolutely, because if I could call it, say something way. about Bobby's passing, yeah. and I think Michal Martin uh, did attend his funeral on both days and was very generous, and the family really appreciated it. But he said mm-hmm. something very nice about Bobby, which I think was very true, uh, in expressing his sympathy. And he said Bobby was a deeply committed public representative in his community. He displayed the, all the attributes of a public representative the ones that they should possess, he said. Passion, sincerity and empathy and commitment to his people and his place. He said, a man of great honesty and integrity, along with being a <coughs> terrorist and a champion on behalf of his people. And he said, Bobby loved his people and his people clearly loved Bobby. And Bobby's door, he said, was always open. I thought that was a nice little piece for Bobby. He got that from all Bobby and that was the contribution he made. It was fair, very honest about Bobby's life. It really was. Very accurate. Very accurate. Yeah, mm. Bobby, I remember what oh, he rang you on Bobby's passing and he said to me, John and he said, I'm really sorry, you know I am, and I know he said you're a great friend. But when I was mayor, he said, I had to visit a woman down in Balahira among the Bat, I forget which it was. But I rang Bobby, he said, because he was local, to know could I go down there as mayor, he said, because she wanted to see the chain and where the he said, Of course he said he came from down. So down he went, he met the good lady in one of the Bella Hill, it was, and uh, they spoke and had their chat, and of course she was delighted. And she asked him, could she go up to Bobby Elwood's house with him? He, he said, we will. He said, show me where it is. So up, up he went to Bobby Elwood's house, drove up to Bobby's and into the door, got out, knocked on the door. And out comes Bobby with a mug in one hand and a slice of toast in the other. And he turned around and he said, Jesus, Mammy. He said, you know who's at the door? He said, the mayor of Kikini. Come in, by." He said, come in. Went in and sat down. And as they were sitting down with his friend, that good lady down among the bat, Sure, he said, you're awful welcome in this house. He said, you're 50% being a fool anyway. He said, you're all welcome <laughs> in this place. <laughs> and Paul really enjoyed that. Uh, Bobby knew what he was talking about, his father and his mother and the history. But like he, he said, he made a feel so well, the fact that the mayor went down, no problem at all to Bobby. He was welcome to the flowers of May, as everywhere in that house. And I suppose, 
Kathleen, how important is it, you know, to have colleagues like that in, in the dog, be it in your own party or other parties or your constituency? You know, as you said, it's, you know, it's very rare that you get politicians that are, you know, that can be straightforward to deal with because when you're in Leinster House, you know, it, it can be a bit of a bit of a bubble at times. And, you know, um, some people are very good and very helpful and some people, you know, might be a little bit more, mightn't be as straightforward to deal with like, like Bobby. Yeah, I think I think actually the fact that you have so many different parties represented here on this actually shows the kind mm. of person that he was. But that is lacking. You do obviously come across people and th- that's actually what stands out for me most. Uh, I often say um, to people like my first experience was on the borough council and it was actually some of my most enjoyable memories because the borough council and John Coonan would know this and Mary actually too, that like it was different in the sense that there was a sense of you kind of were all working together, like the whole thing, thing about what party you were in or whatever didn't really... It came up all right when there was the election of mayor, but apart from that, it didn't really kind of come yeah, up yeah. as such, you know. And um, it was really like, I often wonder if that hadn't been my first experience of politics, would I have kind of stayed in it? And it goes down, it kind of comes back to personalities like Bobby, that you know, yeah. you do need people like that, that, you know, it can be, you know, it can be difficult at times. And people always say to you, oh, you need a thick skin to get involved in politics. But when you when you see personalities, um, like I would actually had a lot of very different political views than Bobby, but yet mm. that's not what I remember at all about him. Like I mean, I you know I think this could even been referenced on local radio by by um yeah. at the time, but like during the repeal the eighth, like we would have had two very very different views on that, yeah. Yeah. and yet we didn't have one argument about it. You know, and it, like I remember, we were on a debate together, and and I actually remember that on the that on that count, um, Bobby was in the count for a while as well, and but there was no um, there was no animosity, there was no issue. It was like we just had our two different views, and it was like having two different views in a family. You could just have your view, okay. and that was fine. And that is something that I actually think it's probably not highlighted enough in politics that that is needed, um, because it's lovely when you can work with somebody and you can regardless of whether they're in your party or not and let me say sometimes you can work better with people that aren't are not in your party like that does happen yeah yeah that's, that, that, can, that can happen a lot too you know so it's lo- it's lovely i love when you have that because you know, the days are long and it's it can be difficult at times and it's kind of an unusual job like people don't really often understand exactly what your day-to-day role is and you know i still have people saying to me god you're in dublin a lot like they don't really understand the whole three days a week in Dublin. And so when you do come across personalities like that, that are just yeah. themselves and there's no hidden agenda and there's nothing, there's no malice in them. Like it is lovely and it's refreshing. And I would agree with Mary said, you know, that he is badly missed. Yeah. And, and I think that that's very, very true. And I also think it's, you know, he was so young as well. And it's, I feel so sometimes I think about, like he didn't have a huge amount of time to enjoy any yeah. sort of a kind of a retirement and with everything with COVID. I, that, that sometimes comes into my head as well when I think about, uh, you yeah, know, how yeah. he passed away. And, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it's, it's sad, very sad for his family. Mm. And, yeah, um, and actually, that, he got a very good, he got a good vote, just unfortunately, the transfers did didn't didn't fall yeah. fall his way. You know? So yeah. of course you had a fantastic vote the last election. You topped the poll with seventeen and a half thousand number ones, which is a, a record. So congratulations to you for that. You know, I'm sure it's something you didn't expect. Oh, we definitely no, we definitely didn't foresee that. And if anyone tells you any different, I can tell you now they're lying because <laughs> you know, there was even an expectation that the seat might be gone. So you know, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. <laughs> And I suppose, Mary, you're uh, you're good for a, a funny story. Do you have any funny stories of Bobby Edward and the Edward family? Well, the, there was one particular time, as only when Kathleen was speaking there, that I remember having a debate uh, uh, with Bobby, and uh, it was to do with uh, um, water for going to. They were looking for to encroach on our lands in Kilkenny, and I was having a bit of a debate with him. <laughs> And uh, he he would get kind of hot headed, you know, and uh, he calmed down twice as quick. 
But anyway, we came, we, 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 we just debated it and talked about it. And uh, Billy Ireland happened to be on the corridor and he said to me, No, Mary, I'm telling you, the only one that ever wins an argument with Bobby is the wife of Lena. <laughs> and Bobby turned around and he said, Christ, you're right there, you know. So, <laughs> that's the kind of a man he was. He was lovely. Mm. He was a very nice man. A very nice man. It's good to mention Helena too. Um, like uh, yeah, Mary really. Mar- mentioned Kitty earlier on. <coughs> um, in ways, uh, Kitty and Helena were quite al- are quite alike. Um, in that, old Bob Elward spent his life on the road between politics and hurling chairman of the county board and like ran in, as John Coonan said, in, 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 in three or four elections and always got a huge vote, but never got elected to the doll. Old Bob, uh, he used to get seven, seven or 8,000 votes and, and a bit like Bobby the last time and just get pipped um, on, on the last count. And Helena, um, much like Kitty kind of kept the show on the road at home. Um, while like the, the nature, we all, all of us on the discussion here, you know, know what politics is like. And when you're in the middle of it, you know, it's constant and um, you're always nearly on the road, but you do need that kind of presence or that kind, you know, somebody who can, who can, who can keep the home fires burning, so to speak. And um, Helena was very much that for, for Bobby and the Elwood family. And um, like uh, I, I, I have different. I, I have stories about t- my time with Bobby too, but I, I, I and actually in, in Billy Ireland as well. It was another one that and <laughs> wor- wor- worth mentioning. I suppose too that <coughs> Billy's daughter has passed away after a very long illness yeah, in Bella yeah, Hill yeah, recently yeah. too, which is very hard um, move on the Ireland family. But they were like it's a good example of how Kathleen touched on this earlier. Like when issues arise in the Oireachtas are indeed issues like Mary mentioned with the boundary in between Kilkenny and Waterford. Party politics doesn't come into it that much, you know. Um, and I always felt, even though as the crow flies, is only about four or five miles between where I grew up and where Bobby Elwood lived. But, uh, and you, like, there would be an expectation outside that we should be at each other's throats the whole time, but we never were. Uh, because time and again, when issues arose, um, we found ourselves always on the same side of the, the argument and trying to to work for our own, either part of Kilkenny or our entire Kilkenny or the entire constituency of Carlo and Kilkenny. Um, uh, and he was always somebody who you could depend upon if an issue arose to to take the fight to whoever it needed to be took to. And I think, in fairness, the boundary issue was one that really ignited every passion that was in his body um, uh, and his sense of identity as any person. And uh, he was very much to the fore over many years in different elements of that struggle, uh, which I suppose will, it's, it, it's like never, it'll, it'll be with us forever, that, that battle between Kilkenny and War. <laughs> it's massive. It's massive. Um, well, the other thing to mention is that Bobby Twins, and I think John Paul did mention it, uh, it was one of the other best friends uh, that was in the for many, many years. Yep. Yeah. They were great friends. I mean, genuine friends they were for John for mm. years. And they really looked after, so did Billy as well. They looked after one another. That's, I think, is the essence of the politics that they, uh, I suppose, pursued. Yeah. And when it comes to politics, it's better. You could discuss Unfortunately, now, Kathleen Funk, Funk Sinn Féin, uh, Sinn Féin TD ha- has to leave us. We thank you for, for uh, uh, taking part in our, in our uh, discussion and we wish you the very best of luck for the upcoming Dahl term. Thanks very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Kathleen, bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, the, the Ireland and, and the Aylers, they, they, go, they go back a long way. Mary, I'm sure you have plenty of stories of, of, of both as well. i sure I have, but... Again, Paula, I, I, I keep coming back there to, to um, well, for me, uh, my experience was local authority level. But the amount of people that sat around there and discussed and thrashed out and went out to meetings and argued mm. the point and uh, then met with different parties to come back in, to, to, to come to a consensus. I mean, that's not something that you would get, I think, in any other local government or even in uh, international politics. 
uh, that only happens, I think, in, in Ireland. And I mean, it's something I wouldn't ever like Ireland to lose. That yeah. only part of our political life where the public can have a say. Uh, now, again, I go back to, to Billy Ireland. We were at many as a conference uh, together, Mary and himself and sure Michael O'Brien and Morris Hart, we were all there, but you're all the all the elected members were there. You went to the conferences that you were interested in, and that was it. And uh, after the conference, we'd all be friends out having a social drink and uh, just debating different things with the conferences. And again, it comes back to the friendship yeah. and and the people that we met there. I mean. Uh, I, I served with John Paul there on the local authority uh, uh, or on the, the, the local authority for a mm. few years as well. And when he got elected, I was as proud as I'm sure as what he was, <laughs> uh, you know, and yeah. uh, I've served with John Conan there uh, mm. for many a year. I uh, mightn't have agreed with everything now, he said, but <laughs> I served with him. And there's a few more things I need to discuss with him. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I could honestly say that I could call them all very, very respectable people and very respectable to the females, especially, that would yeah, be yeah. Uh, uh, sitting on the local authority. And um, I suppose if I had a wish, it would be that more females would come through or that a law would come through that where it would be 50-50 because I feel females really add to the debate and they, they're quite good Absolutely. at keeping things calm, but losing the head as well, but keeping things calm yeah. in, in a lot of cases. Yeah, exactly. Because if I, I'm, I'm open to correction here. I think there's of the current 24 councillors and Kenny County Council at the moment, only four are, are female. That's a, a very, very low, low number. Well, it is, and 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 I just, uh, from my own experience, I think uh, it's quite difficult ah. being, well, being a mother anyway, uh, mm. uh, and being on the local authority, unless you have uh, uh, someone there at your back to take over uh, uh, the responsibilities of the home while you go out uh, to yeah. your meetings, because uh, it's another thing, I don't think the public understand uh, the amount of meetings that... Uh, a councillor or a TD has to attend. Uh, and uh, you, you would often hear people saying, oh, sure, this one does nothing and that lad does even less. Uh, you know, without understanding uh, yeah. the pressure on time for these meetings and being part of committees as well. It's not just a once a month meeting. I mean, you could be sitting on four committees that will be meeting yeah. once a month as well. And that's time. And people yeah. don't understand that, you know. I, th I think, I, I think Paul is... No, Paul, would you, you it, agree with it, a lot of that? Yeah, I would, but I think there's only three out of twenty-four that are that are female in Kilkenny at the moment, which is yeah. which is strange because going back to Very when Mary when Mary was on the council, there were seven or eight or nine or more out of out of twenty-six as it was then on the, on the full county. It's uh, Kilkenny has a proud tradition, uh, really, of of women in politics going back to the 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 first ones that were first female members of the council that were elected in the seventies. Um, but the numbers the numbers. Numbers have fallen, yeah. Numbers have fallen um, since then, and they're like Mary's right. Like, uh, um, it's not just a question of of balance in itself, but it's also like there, there's different perspectives in terms of debates, and it's something that all parties have, uh, and indeed independents have, have have slipped back on. But um, I suppose to go back to the to the Elward um, uh, story in politics, I think. Yes. And John Coonan might correct me if I'm wrong. I, 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 I'm not sure, was it late 40s or early 50s that Bob Edwards stood um, and got elected to Kilkenny County Council for the first time? Which is, like, when you consider where we are now in 2022, marking 100 years of the, of, of the history of, of an independent 26-county state, um, that's, that, effectively, that's three quarters of, of the time that the state has been independent that there's been an Edward on Kilkenny County Council, which is a yeah, remarkable yeah. thing in, in and of itself. Um, uh, and uh, I don't like Eamon Edward is still a very young man. Um, I'm sure he, he he has further to go in politics. I when I was elected in '99, both Liam and Bobby were on the council together. 
Um, right. And I think back to those days, actually, Phil Hogan and Dick Dowling as a former TD was on it for yeah. Finnegan, Mary Hilda Kavanagh, who was a bit of a, I think it's an, ins- an institution. I think TD and a county councillor at the same time. Well, it, 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 exactly. Now, like, Joe, Joe Cody was there for the Labour. He was the only Labour one that yeah. was there, but he was a good one. God rest him. Um, was. Uh, but, like, there was... There was there was f- very formidable voices involved in, in local government in Kilkenny, and we still have them, in fairness. But um, I, it's changed a bit since the, the dual mandate abolition came in. And perhaps not all, not all for the best either, um, uh, because that little bit of a connection between what was going on nationally and what was going on locally um, isn't there anymore. Um, uh, and I think that has been a bit of a weakness, but... Um, look at we are where we are and the system is in place now and I don't see it being reversed but uh, it was um, the two Elwards in full flight at a, at a county council meeting was a sight to behold um, <laughs> 20 whatever years ago as a young lad coming out of running out of WIT to get to get to some council meeting I can remember actually my, my you right. mentioned at the start my I was 20 when I was elected first God be I was a child but um uh, the, the, another man who's passed away, the late great Dixie Dyle, John Coonan might remember this. There was a council meeting held in Mount Juliet. Right. And Dixie piped up um, about early enough in the meeting that it was Liam Elwood's birthday. And it was his 50 yeah. something birthday. I'm not sure what year it was. But I hadn't said anything to anyone. Tooth and nail for Thomas and, no. Well, yeah, he did indeed for years. But. Um, uh, I, I didn't realise that I shared a birthday with uh, Liam Edward. So my, my 21st birthday was celebrated <laughs> at a council meeting in Mount Julius and Liam's 50-something birthday, um, uh, uh, whenever that was, 20, 20, 23 years ago. Everyone knows my age now. But um, that's one happy memory that I have of, of my time serving with Bobby and, uh, and indeed Liam and Dixie. And several of them are gone since. Um, going back to what Mary was mentioning about female members of the council, like one yeah. one very good friend that I had who passed away again in the last, during the COVID times, was Joan Murphy from Greg the Manor, who was a lovely, 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 warm, motherly type. Like she was like my mother on the council. Um, I can remember going in days when maybe as a student, I, I felt a bit ill and it might it might have been self-inflicted illness <laughs> i could always count on joan for the paracetamol or the salpadina <laughs> yeah. or whatever it was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that was the way like look it's years ago now but that, that was the way that the council worked and i think still to a large extent does work uh mary's point about the the war that how people could get on with one another and yet disagree yeah. with one another how how people could uh, hold strong views uh, and yet when when uh, when they stepped outside the chamber could could <laughs> could be could be friendly with one another and um, that is something that we should ne- we should never lose um even though politics well, as we started this politics is a different business now even than it was um 20 we, years ago if we look at all the successes Kilkenny has had over the last number of years you know through investment or or whatever it wouldn't have been possible unless all the political parties, politicians, they all kind of work together. Work, work, work mm. together. And yep. uh, as um, John Paul has, has said there, John, you know, Bobby was like, there was his father and his brother and now his, his nephew, Eamon, is on the, on the council. You know, the Aylward name was always in, in Kilkenny po- politics. Now, that can, that's a pressure that can weigh on, on people. Did, did Bobby kind of, did, Bobby weighed down by that at times, or did he embrace it, John? Bobby, Bobby, Bobby lived his life like that. Bobby didn't even understand that that was the case. He just lived his life like that. And I think John Paul and maybe uh, Mary mentioned it earlier on, uh, talking about uh, involvement and what would help. We we'll say uh, as being a legislator compared to what has been as a council. I think what helps the legislator, and I think it helps Bobby, John Paul, and others as well, is being deeply rooted in your community. All mm. the elders are deeply rooted in the community. They were involved in farming. They were involved in the Shamrocks. In actual fact, before the late Bobby was still chairman of the Shamrocks uh, when he passed away. His two sons heard of the team as well. Bobby played uh, sport as well. Uh, so the, the the little local shop, the community shop that was set up down there as well. He was involved in mm-hmm. so was his wife, Alina, involved in that. Being involved in your community before you get involved in politics, whether at a local level 
and particularly at a national level as well, understanding the minutiae of what it means to a local community as well. It, it, it does help when you're involved with your community. So Bobby was Absolutely. immersed in his community, so was the other. And I think well, that's we're, we're, we are uh, very, very unique in our own sense here in Ireland that, you know, you sort of see it yourself, John Paul, that, you know, our politicians are so accessible, whereas there's certain, in the UK, for example, there are politicians that once they get elected, they're straight down to Westminster and you don't see them in their constituency mm. till, till there's an election five years later. We don't have anything like the, the safe seats that they have in the UK or indeed in America. It's the same in America. Now, I know America is yes, a vast absolutely. country, but in, in, in Ireland, you, you fight over every vote. And it might be a good, fair, clean fight, but but uh, John Coonan's point is is accurate, particularly if you're if you're starting out at local government level. Like again, to bring it back to my own example, when people were voting for me as a twenty year old, half them were voting for yeah. me because I was a young lad, but half them were voting for my parents, you know, because of of yeah. involvement. Uh, and the Albert family had that in spades. And uh, the thing that I always was so envious about to the Albert family was how there was one of them in every part <laughs> in South Kilkenny. <laughs> Morris Ellard, uh, a great family friend uh, of ours, uh, is in my own parish of, of Ross Burke. And he, he had a, a, one of his sisters is in, in Munkine, Liam up in, 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 in Hoganstown. Uh, yeah. they, and Sean uh, was only over the road a bit from him. Um, like the, 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 they, they had they there was a large family and there was nearly there was nearly one in every parish which was a great uh, a head yeah. start in a political sense That's as well and there. because the, the, they were all, the exactly but uh, and he, uh, other, also along with that it wasn't just that there was one in every parish and 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 you wasn't short of canvases but they were all involved in things you know they were oh, all yes. they, whatever the thing was like even um, some of his nephews and nieces were into the into the ponies and the horses, um, yeah. you know, all sorts of kind of country pursuits, but all, like the, involved in their community. And um, yeah. like you can't, you can't beat that. That's the John Coonan point, and he's right. You can't beat that in terms of, of, of uh, you know, giving people an insight and uh, in, in, in terms of elections and knowing what's going on on the ground um, in between elections, which is crucially important. Yeah. Paul, I'll tell you one thing that Bobby told yeah, me one time, and I never... I'll never forget it. I, I, I was introduced to politics because of the Edward and McKinney. And if I could be 1% like the qualities or have the qualities that they have, I'd be a happy person. Because Bobby said to me one day, John, he said, before I came to a local delegation, I wish you well, John, he said, and look at here, he said, I think you will be elected, he said. But I could, could I offer you one bit of advice uh, if elected? And I know you'll do it, he said. Just simply be nice to people and you won't go wrong. I thought it was a smash mm. state. And I never forgot that statement that he made. And I think that's yeah. Bobby himself. Yeah, before yeah. I before I go now, because I'll have to be going shortly, um, yeah, there's two things I just wanted to mention. And one was Absolutely. in the it was a very sad day when the borough council was finished. Mm. A very, very yeah. sad day. And throughout the history of the borough council, there was only ever three female mayors in Kilkenny. That was Margaret Tyne and Betty Manning and myself. Uh, 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 and I don't know in the future uh, will there be any more, but the other thing was a funny story, I, because I have to go babysitting, <laughs> a funny story about Dixie Doyle. Dixie Doyle was selling a sheep, sheep or something. <laughs> lamps, lamps, he used to lamps, call them. Lamps, was it? Lamps. And uh, <laughs> Billy Ireland and myself, anyway, we said, Usher, here, we'll buy one. So anyway, as it happened, a couple of weeks later, uh, I was to meet him in the car park in Venice Bridge, and he'd have this lamb all <laughs> cut up and ready. So I proceeded, gave him the money and came home with this box of lamb, was putting it away into the freezer and I said, Jesus Christ, there was no liver or kidneys with this thing. And I'm very partial to uh, mm. lamb's liver, but lamb's anyway, liver. Yeah. I uh, met Dixie at the next council meeting mm. and I said, well, come here to me, uh, that lamb I said that I bought up yet had no kidneys, I said, and no liver. And he turned around as cool as a breeze and he said, I'd say that was the one was born without him now, Mary. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what can you do? You couldn't answer that. <laughs> yeah, no. no. Mary, just before you go, and then we'll ask John Paul and John Coonan, what would you say would be his, the biggest legacy that Bobby Elwood left locally and uh, as a national uh, TD? I think locally his impact on people and his consideration uh, 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 of 
uh, people around and uh, his community uh, down uh, down there near Mullinavat. But I think nationally, it was the name and the name meant something to people up and down the country. But his respect, I think, is the thing that we all need to learn and and yeah. and, and and do his respect of people. I have seen him. I had seen him sitting with a traveller group because I was at the same meeting and he chatting away there as if he was born on the side of the road. And he has been up there in the doll, and he has represented Kilkenny in the highest respect. And I think what he left was respect of people and who, where they were, not what they had. Mm. Common decency. Common decency. That's it. And it's not. It's not that common, though. That's the thing. Yeah. But no, it was for Bobby. Exactly. Yeah, it was for Bobby. It was for Bobby. And John Paul. Yeah. yeah. And John Paul, what would you say that his um, the legacy that you think he left behind locally and uh, uh, nationally? I think I agree absolutely with everything that Mary said. Um, but to add to it, I think. Um, Locally, one of his biggest impacts was was actually on the boundary issue, because when that was floated for the first time, goodness gracious, it was back before the um, the, the economic. It, yeah, yeah. And then it um, reared its head in 2015. It, it seems to come back every 10 or 12 years in, in cycles. Yeah. But the first time that it was raised, it was the first time that that issue had come up for quite some time. And um, I think Bobby brought it very much home to to Kilkenny people, but also to the management at the time of the local authority, the impact that it would have financially for yeah. the council, but also in, in terms of the sense of identity. I think that was something like it, it, it struck at the core of what he was about, uh, you know, those that type of identity issue. Um, nationally, actually, his, his, his biggest impact was the by-election win in the sense people, I think, forget... Um, it was a time when Michal Martin, as leader of Fianna Fáil, was under a bit of pressure. Um, and like he's now the Taoiseach and, and since he's gotten the job, has, 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 has performed well in it. But at the time, um, it was an answer to some of his critics as leader. And I, I hadn't, I must confess, I hadn't heard all the words that John uh, stated earlier from Michal Martin. But um, like they were genuine words because I, I think that Michal himself, you know, at the time and subsequently recognised the importance of that by-election victory for, for himself um, and for Fianna Fáil politically as well. Um, and that was a, like a by-election is a difficult thing at the best of times, but um, it's certainly a very unique electoral experience. And uh, Bobby's... Bobby's um, Bobby's approach to politics and his style, and also like the 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 the, the recognition and and the name, uh, but but his own his own unique kind of um, a down to earth way of dealing with people was what was what won that by election for for him and for Fianna Fáil and for me, Martin. So I think that was his biggest probably national thing, which is almost something that people have forgotten about and are even at the time didn't probably appreciate, but it was significant. And John, Councillor John Coonan, will give you the last word. Uh, yeah, thanks. I think all of what has been said by my colleagues there has been very genuine and been very honest about Bobby. But Bobby was all of those things. But I suppose in the word, uh, I would agree with John Paul. The winning of the by-election uh, in May 2015 turned the fortunes of Fianna Fáil. And it was Bobby Elwer turned the fortunes. It was Bobby's mm. capacity, Bobby's personality. People, I remember people saying at that time, this was the old-fashioned politics. But it wasn't. It was the real politics for the real people offered by Bobby. He presented himself. He didn't, not self-serving. He was never playing to the gallery. But he won that election with huge respect. And I think uh, uh, just a point of that respect was the amount of people, TDs and senators and former friends that came from all corners of Ireland to help Bobby in that by-election show mm. the respect that Bobby was held. It showed his passion and his sincerity and his commitment to the people. And like I said earlier on, Michal Martin said he loved his people and the people loved Bobby as well. One thing that I always remember in the council chamber as well, Bobby fought for South Kenny. He was an elected representative like John Paul most people, but there was no doubt about uh, uh, um, Bobby's fight for the people of South Kenny, that's for sure. And I suppose in a word, 
Bobby had a big smile with a big heart and there was room for everybody in it. We, we all could, uh, I suppose, learn by that example. And I'll never forget him for it. Yep. Here, here. That's true. Well, we'll, we'll come to the, to the close of the programme. And I know I speak for Paul. We just would really, really like to thank um, John Coonan, uh, for co a colleague of Bobby Elwood, to come on today, my Fitzpatrick, and definitely uh, John Paul Phelan, and definitely Kathleen Function. Thank you so much indeed um, for welcome. taking part in this tonight. You're welcome. Thanks, Roger. Thank you Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.